All right, everyone. Guess what? We're back. Well, some of us anyway. <laughs> it's uh, been about three years. Um, no. <laughs> Actually, it's been three months. But three months. Still. Depending on where what uh, what universe you're in, hey. Uh, but uh, no, we are finally back. Welcome to the 546 Project. And it has been forever. And we're... But the issue is we haven't been in the same room that much over that three-month time frame. Yeah, I mean, we could sit here and go into a long, elaborate, very complicated list of reasons why things haven't worked out. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you, hey, life happens. <laughs> Send an email. Let us know you miss us there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would be the first email we probably it's, received. That's right. I mean, it's, it's gotten so bad that poor Nathan here canceled the contest for American Pie, so we're not even going to plug that i mean i think he i think he had to donate it i, I think it's on wish now or something well um, actually it's it is still in my house i oh, believe yeah but aren't yeah but aren't you using it for a coaster um no uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think the mic stand is setting on folks no. um no. <laughs> oh yeah and i don't think we've uh talked about how we have a new mic yes and we, are not just recording on my phone it's uh, it's a blue mic. It's the Blue Yeti mic, and it's really good. It's a I've, really good mic. I've never seen a Blue Yeti. I mean, the thing weighs about 300 pounds um, in the mic stand, no. That's um, just the stand alone. Yeah, I mean, the mic itself. Like, this, this thing is... This thing is heavy duty. I've I've heard of Blue Yeti for a long time. I know they make really good audio equipment, so I'm really curious to see how this sounds once we're done recording. So, uh, thanks to Nathan for upgrading our audio to uh, audio equipment here. Yeah, uh, I noticed how during the shows, the podcasts, how it's, it's hard to hear people if you're kind of like sitting ba- far back and you're not huddled right like right next to the mic. So I yeah. figured if we were going to have like four different people or five different people at one time, that would be an advantage. But here we are sitting with two people. Well, right now we have two people and a and cat. And a cat. Yeah, because uh, one of my cats is like just really trying to get on this. I mean, she has a lot of a lot of views on world and current events. So I mean, but we're uh, we're beefing up and uh, updating our technical current events here. like a, like an old history <laughs> yeah I mean now if we can just get that black and white TV hooked up to the Betamax out of the corner we'll be uh, we'll be in business but uh, you know I mean we, we, we do what we can All right, but there is a lot to talk about I'm going to be honest with y'all we're probably going to bounce around a lot so get some like we drink. usually do yeah so get a drink set, strap in hold on tight and take a ride with us so. but we'll start with how uh, the reason we're actually in the same room because yes. tonight as i record this very show is aew's fighter fest really looking forward to this one hopefully you all the anyone listening got a chance to check out at least some part of double or nothing because it was fantastic i personally thought it was the show of the year yeah it i mean it it, it had, had eyes. It like, had everything. It if had you, something. If you were a wrestling like. fan, it was a show that you had to like. You had to enjoy at least some aspect of the show. Now, it, I'd say, the last three uh, matches were amazing from the from the actual card. My personal favorite was the Cody and Dustin match. Cody and Dustin stole the show, honestly. Uh, the tag match, but the, the Young United Bucks and the Lucha uh, Brothers won after that. That was I thought that was a good. Match that was tag team wrestling, WWE tag. No, that was tag team wrestling the way tag team wrestling should be. And it's sad to see the tag division, and you can tell they're trying to do more with it now in WWE. Mm-hmm. They're you know, I think I mean I'd like to say that I think Vince has maybe taken notice that something's going on. I don't think they believe AEW is competition yet. Um, I think it's more competition competition than what TNA will ever be. Honestly, I I don't think it's it's that you can't consider it competition yet because they don't have a show. No, right now but, they I mean, will. They but. have to realize that this could be a thing. I mean, somebody up there in Titan Towers has to realize that this could be a thing. It apparently uh, far outreached their expectations as far as buy rate and all that. So I'm, is I'm it not encouraging? Surprised. Start for AEW. This tonight's show is free. You don't have to pay anything like you did double or nothing. Just, so that's uh, another advantage. Just download the Bleacher Report Live, the uh, BR Live app to uh, to check it out. And that's on. They'll have all of their shows whenever on that app. And yeah, then you can pay like right through the, the app. The pay per view. The next actual pay show is all out in uh, August. 
Uh, and you can you can go on the BR Live app and you can pay for the ad, you can pay for the pay per view there or a lot of your traditional uh, cable and satellite providers. I know we watched it frankly through Directv when uh, when we watched it over here, watched uh, Double or Nothing. So really easy to check out. But yeah, I agree with you. I think it's really going to come down to when they get on TV how they go. It's did supposed you, to be on Wednesdays. Yeah. Did you see they filed for Wednesday some, uh, night trademarks. dynamite? Is that that? I think that's the, supposed about, to be the right. show. It's close enough for government work right now, so it, it, it's a good name. Yeah, it's right. not it, like it, at least well, they I didn't use ori- Nitro or something. I think originally they were gonna, I think, shooting for Tuesday, but I don't know the, the whole Wednesday night dynamite. Just I don't know, it flows better. I think than it, Tuesday I night think it's dynamite. A, I think it's a very good night for wrestling. It's in the middle of the week. There hasn't been wrestling on Wednesdays since well like, NXT. Since, if are we well, counting no, NXT? It, it, no, I'm counting on on uh, traditional TV. Not uh, right. not streaming because you do have to stream the WWE Network for uh, for NXT. Right. But uh, I can't recall live wrestling on Wednesday night since what Thunder was not. Was, uh, was, was Thunder, Thunder on Wednesday? Thunder moved to Wednesday, I believe. At huh. one point, it was originally Thursday night Thunder, but then I believe they moved to Wednesday. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I, I think they did. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, you can look back. There was also, but again, this was uh, pay per views. The Wednesday night uh, weekly TNA shows, which were fantastic. I don't know what happened to them along the way. The ones you had to pay like $10. Yeah, but shot. Oh, they were well worth it. There was great stuff. I will put in a plug for Impact Plus, I believe is the name of the streaming app. I want to say it's like seven ninety nine or something like that. Access to the library alone. Access to the Wednesday pay-per-views alone is well worth it. Check it out. I had a subscription for a little while and... You know how life gets in the way. I had to drop it. I'm seriously thinking about going back to it. There is such a thing as too much wrestling, I believe. I you can absolutely flood the market. Absolutely. I mean, kind of go back to the Monday Night Wars. You know, you look at it. There was what you had two hours of Raw, three hours of Nitro. You had SmackDown. You had Thunder, and then the Saturday, and then the weekend. So yeah, you you can definitely there can be too much. Raw is too much. I still say three hours of Raw is way too much. Yeah, for if you're gonna see the same people on every week, it seemed well with this wild card, card rule that they have in place, which nobody really they they, they put a, a certain parameters on the rule, but they even broke those parameters. They've done it because of the deal with Fox. I think Fox wants to attract as many people as possible, so there's an easier way to do that: kill the brand split and just put them together. But. <laughs> I've never been a big fan of the brand split. I've well, the issue comes to that. where you have all these uh, superstars and they don't ever get on television, yet they're still part of the fold and you just use the same guys. I, I, I think they have enough guys, obviously, to have a brand split, but they're doing it because... I, you, as you said, like because they're moving to Fox. Yeah, and like, and they, they, anything to get, I guess, the ratings up from yeah, what it is. And I think it's Fox that wants that wants certain talent, which is understandable. I mean, yeah, they're putting out a lot of money for this thing. It's not, right. not a big deal in place here. So of course they, you know, they want as much for their buck as, as they can get. So speaking of the changes coming to WWE, big, there was a huge change big that was. I was I was at my desk at work. And I saw this on my Facebook feed. I couldn't believe it because there was no rumor of this happening at all. I never I, usually like you read uh, like the rumor mill usually over you time. Catch rumblings you, like that maybe this could happen. About doing it's and it, the, well, the the one guy it was well, completely out of line. The one's yeah. one's already there. But what we're talking about, of course, Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff, to what I guess executive produce. They are executive directors. Uh, for Raw, Heyman and is Smackdown. for Raw, and Bischoff is for SmackDown. I I like it. It's well, there's a couple things you can take away from this. They realize that it's they're in uh, some dire straits here, and they need to get they need to do something to get some fresh ideas or or they need to make some changes because what's out there is stale for most people's opinion and it's just not the ratings are reflecting that and if you notice they're already trying if you notice i don't know if you read and if you've noticed watching raw now they're trying to eliminate breaks during matches 
Yeah, uh, I'm I'm in favor of that. I'm not so much in favor of them just having two out of three fall matches to compensate because of the breaks. Yeah, that's they can just fit, how they do it now. Just fit a whole match in, take your commercial you can, break. You can have a solid match without a commercial break. I mean, if you can keep the action going, don't let it go stale. I mean, you get a couple of young guys in there that can move and can keep you entertained, then you're good. I, I hate the commercial breaks during the pre-show matches on the pay-per-view. Like, well, exactly. Why? We already know we're watching the WWE Network. But I guess they're trying to fulfill those that watch it on... Because don't they also put their pre-shows on Facebook Live and, and uh, yeah, other, I believe other streaming so. outlets? So, I mean, I guess they're really trying to push that, but... I, I'm with you. I don't think if there you're be... if you're watching the show and you don't know what WWE Network is and how to get it, then I don't know what. At, at that point, I mean, it's okay. It's six forty-five, and you've got a pay per view ready to kick off at seven. You're pretty much already in, it, whether or not you're going to order it or not. You don't need to be told to go to WWE.com and, and sign up for the network. And get it's the one thing place. if you were having like the old pre-shows back in the '90s where they had like thirty minutes and they had like the control center. And all that, and they were yeah, showing like they, highlights, and they, they ran just the thing kept in the plugging it. With the yeah. Time. yeah, that was one thing. But I now you're actually <laughs> having matches that are going on, and you're taking away from the performers themselves yeah, it, because it, who are struggling gives, to get on the card anyway. It gives the fans the uh, it puts them in the mindset of like, oh, these these matches don't matter, and we yeah, should really pay attention they're, to they're them. They're not important. And it, it sucks for the people that are always on the pre show matches, like the cruiserweights and all that. Yeah, 205 Live. I don't know how they keep that going. I, I don't know what they're would what they going to do now uh, with if they move it. or I, They'll probably keep it on the network. But, um, I mean, if, and, they, and, if, and, they balanced, all, if they balance their talent right, really, they could filter them both onto the – they could really filter them onto both shows and give them ample time, and you could still do something. Well, they used uh, to be exclusive to Raw, yes, and then they moved them. And it, yeah, it makes sense because you it, know, it three, like raw. three hour show, and it, it you don't really have slowed down raw, and it was all in the booking, really, if you think about it. Yes, because the cruiserweight put them can, at the beginning yes, of the show. You're gonna hype the crowd up, but they would have their their. But course, they their ha- big, they have to have like I guess the monologue at the beginning of the yeah, show you every week. Your, you gotta have your morning or your your nightly monologue. And, you know, we'll throw the top ten list in there. Hmm. But, uh, no, and then it's like right in the middle of it, and instead of amping the crowd up, it really kind of slows them down. Usually Nitro, whenever they, like, they had, I guess when they had the three-hour show, that's what they would open with usually the Cruiserweight matches. If that I was remember. the one thing. I will say that's the one thing WCW got right was the Cruiserweight division, only they just they never pushed the guys enough. And here we go. We have the guy who used to run WCW now running SmackDown, or will will, be here pretty soon. I still don't blame Bischoff for everything. I I want. I recommend you all read a book called "The Death of WCW." Brian Alvarez. Are you familiar with it? Uh, I've kind of heard the name. Definitely check it out. Um, I got mine from Audible. Can't plug Audible enough. Uh, definitely get out and uh, you know if you if you have an Audible subscription, you use a credit on it. It's well worth it. So it's a really cool book. Uh, I, I don't blame Bischoff for everything because I'll still say if somebody handed me an open checkbook and said get who you can and in the sole sole purpose of sticking it to Vince McMahon, I'd have did the same thing. Well, the only thing was, of course, the the huge problem was they gave all these guys their own control over it's their the characters. It's your swaggering egos. You get your Kevin Nash's and Scott Hall's and you like, want to put uh, anybody over. You're missing you're missing the big fish. Oh well of course. I was gonna let you have that. You one. mean the uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nanny. That's himself. right. That's right. Suburban Commando's own ship Ramsey looking at you Hawk. And, and and see this is what kind of worries me a little bit because Bischoff was in power at least a little bit during the Hogan Impact run and that was not really the bad that was one of the worst um, times for uh, TNA I don't think he's going to have the control that he did then because like no no Hogan's not no 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 I'm talking about Bischoff I don't think he's going to have quite the say because they yeah Hogan and Bischoff are friends but he's uh, I mean, he's going to be the number one for SmackDown. Only but McMahon's like, on. Yeah, I was overall. just going to say, but like you said, he we were talking in Texas. We, he will still answer to Vince. 
So which is kind, which you which know may be man has to be drunk, kicking and screaming into anything, which so, may be a problem. Exactly, exactly. But I mean, I'm excited. I, I'm assuming it'll start this Monday. I'm assuming that'll be the no. Oh. I've heard that they're going to slowly bring them in, so it's okay. not going to be immediate. I mean, they'll they'll be kind of part of it at immediately but not full bore it's they're gonna like wean them in if they let these guys go and just let them be themselves if Heyman can do what he wants to do and be Paul Heyman and Bischoff can can do what Bischoff does we aside from the fact we may see the NWO again um <laughs> a lot of people were think were uh hoping that Heyman would be uh, the head of SmackDown, like he was. That's back. what I when I read it. That's what I was saying because do you remember the Heyman era on SmackDown? I I never really. SmackDown's one of those shows that it's not on like a network that is. Uh, well, I'll admit, uh, same now I, read, I mean it's I on the, the same spoilers. ones as Raw, and it was taped show. Yeah, too. I'll admit I read the spoilers, and then if I if I missed it, too bad. But I did try to watch. He had a, he had some really cool things going on on SmackDown back then. I, it, I, got, you know, it got it got so so good that uh, Vince was like, I mean, they should, SmackDown shouldn't be beating Raw. What what's going on here? You know, that's back when Lesnar was uh, at the height of his first run. And they had a guy named John Cena. You know, John Cena was up and coming. Kurt Angle, I believe, was on SmackDown. Yeah, his Angle. Uh, you know, Heyman had that faction. I can't remember what they called themselves, but uh, with the exception mm, of Nathan like, Jones, they had big Big Show was that part of that, right? Yes, I can't remember the name, but it was uh, what uh, Lesnar Show. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, Nathan Jones, the Colossus uh, of Bell Road, who, or whatever. Who was the other uh, guy? Uh, a Train. Was, tra- was it A Train? No, no. Um, Matt Morgan. Morgan. Matt yeah. Morgan was in there. I mean, these were all big stars at the time, man. They, they, it was great. SmackDown had a lot of great shows. I enjoyed SmackDown back then. Yeah. It. That was that whole ruthless aggression era. You know, you had a lot of guys that were coming up. I enjoyed it. So I I kind of was like you. I'd kind of like to have seen. Plus, Bischoff, you know, ran Raw at one time. He was the on, on-screen GM. He never really was like a backstage. He was only like on-screen. He, 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 he pitched like some ideas, but I don't think he wasn't like part of the team so right. much. Where, where Heyman, I believe, was. Heyman was yes, he, he was ahead of SmackDown. Plus, Paul Heyman's a genius. I was gonna say, uh, Paul Heyman's a genius. Yeah, some people will call him that. Some, I mean, he his company did go under. Just he did facts manage, facts. He did manage manage money very well, but his ideas, as far as what he did, I mean, look at the phenomenon ECW was. Yeah, and people still talk about ECW. Exactly, this there's day. still ECW chance anytime somebody like Tommy Dreamer or. Uh, you know the Sandman, <laughs> train wreck. The Sandman is, but even the, the Sandman. Well, the tra- train wreck. Did you see the I, article I uh, put up Tommy there? Tommy Dreamer. I read about that the other day. Like I said, folks, we're going to be all over the place. Uh, yeah, apparently his depression and anxiety was so bad that at WrestleMania 17, he apparently considered flipping the kill switch and. Uh, uh, on he, himself and he, Heyman. He was going to uh, shoot Paul Heyman and then commit suicide. Yeah, d- during, during could, the show. During, uh, what was it, WrestleMania 17? 17 in Houston, which Texas is like this open carry state or Yeah, something. could you imagine had that happened? He, well, I don't know if wrestling would be... I don't, could it even recover from something? I know we have the own heart stuff, but it's not... It's not the same as somebody it's, jump it's in the barricade, to, murder, it, suicide. Yeah, it's hard to act like that never happened. On, on the show. Yeah, and you know what I'm referring to. It's hard to act like that person never happened no. by doing something like that. Right. How do you bounce back from that? What do you do? Well, in the case of Benoit, little details were known at the time, so they just dedicated a whole Raw to him. And then after that, they were like, oh, great, this happened. But so what would that do to live, to live Gates Tell and stuff like a lot. that? Like, uh, I don't know. Just, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to think about. It, it really is hard yeah. to think about. I mean, just that, that just kind of boggles the mind. Like, that really is messy. Yeah. What do you, how do you recover from that in general, man? That, 
I mean, trust me, I'm sure there's a lot of guys over the years that have wanted to take a shot at Paul Heyman. I believe he still owes people money. Uh, and, yeah, there are people that um, know, like, to the cent how much they're owed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I hate to say it, and I, I'm a Paul Heyman guy, but he really could have paid him back by now. Um, oh, he's he's got the money. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But, I mean, he took he took nothing and turned it into ECW. Every every good thing comes to an end, unfortunately. But, yeah, I mean, so if they would let him do what he wants to do, I'm wondering how hard he's going to get shot down on a lot of things here. Um, what, you know, I'll be real interested to read the ideas that he had that doesn't make it because, you know, that'll, that'll eventually come out. It'll take one disgruntled writer or something like that to let all that lead. But, I, but I'm excited. I've had a major issue with them employing writers who aren't wrestling fans at all, haven't seen the, the program at that all. They know nothing about it. Like, uh, so and, there but were, they want it like, like that. They were so they could, I guess they have a fresh, a fresh perspective, but it's... I don't like it how they have it that way. No, it's like when you they need to have TV people writers that soap opera writers. are a either have watched the program and are fans of the program and know what they're actually seeing, or two have uh, people that used to write wrestling programs or former wrestlers on the booking committee. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's with any job. You need to have a general idea of what you're doing. You know, you need to have a general. I mean, you're hired for a certain reason. It would help to know what you're doing instead of just going in there blindfolded. So do you think Duke the Dumpster Drosy ever got like a garbage man gig because he played one on TV? I'm going to hope not. <laughs> it, um, well, he could. He could have. Are you telling me that T.L. Hopper wasn't a real plumber? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, he could have ha- been a homemade plumber if he had to me, unclog a toilet at his house. you telling me that Bob Sparkplug Holly never drove that race car in real life? Mm. Uh, I'd like to see him go out on the track right now and see if he can put down a fast lap. Is he doing anything? Now, whatever happened to Bob Holly? He wrote uh, a book uh, he did. a few years yeah. back. I, I think he's largely, as far as I know, retired from the kind business. He just went into obscurity. I, still, I don't know. One of my favorite Bob Holly stories still when he smacked the shit out of Rene Dupree for getting a DUI in his car, rental car, or whatever. And, oh, yeah, I mean, he had Dupree had a nice shiner on SmackDown that week. He was. I bet he thought twice. I'll tell you. So, it, with all this, um, you you actually think it's going to be uh, an improvement? I, I'd like or, to hope. Or at least... I, I mean, of anything that they're doing, of the changes you hear that need to be done and things that may be done, this has me interested. This has piqued my interest. And we were talking, You would you, would you put them on camera anymore in their role? Now, Heyman's already on TV. As, you have to put like Heyman exactly. because of Lesnar, but only for Lesnar. I would not. I'd keep him off TV. I think you need to have someone. You, you don't really need to have more or less an authority figure. I don't think. You don't need to, but I think Bischoff would would equal ratings. I think Bischoff would. You TV don't would need equal to ratings. have one on TV every week. No, like, no, you don't. You like don't make maybe him. if someone, if if there's like a major thing, then he comes on. Yeah, you don't. You know, you could basically have somebody that say answers to him. You know that, that it's their job. You know, once this new era kicks off, put bring him out then, and have him appoint a GM or whatever. You know, somebody appoint somebody, and just basically they report to him, and you only see, like you said, you only see him certain times. I think it's also would be um, interesting to see what these guys do with talent that's there now, because right. just because of the the eras that they were in, and then the eras that is now, like you ha- what Heyman would do with guys like Seth Rollins and uh, Alexa B- Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, all these people on Raw, and then for SmackDown how Bischoff would do, do Roman Reigns and all those guys. Yeah, I mean, I just... Like I said, as long as we don't see the NWO again, that that's fine. Please I, let, I think, th- please I think they're smart enough to let the past be the past. <laughs> I, I hope. Honestly, I and hope that's, so. And that's I, been a problem here kind of recently where they cling on more than they should about 
things that happened 20 years ago. They're they don't have people. Yeah. They have people here that are the future, and they don't want to use them, or they aren't using them as most people think they should be. And look at Elias. Elias, they are wasting him. He he does nothing. He comes out and gets beat up after he plays a little bit of a song and talks a little trash. Why is he not wrestling? Why is he not an Intercontinental Champion? He won the twenty four seven championship like well, what he twice? Did for about twenty four seconds. Mm. No, I I don't care much for that title either. That's another thing. I think it's. I actually think it's interesting myself. I it, it's they need to mix it up with a little bit. Na- kind of well, the thing people. is now we with how they're using social media it's like it, it, it mixes together really well because they can have title changes on uh, www.com and all their social media and you can see it there I True. think it's good yeah and I mean they are I did read a thing that said that they are the most popular uh, YouTube videos that the, the network puts up yeah because they are huge people are loving it that's because our truth is the champion and he's awesome and, I think. And, and, yeah, I mean, and that's. I'm glad to see them finally do something with him because it, he's. Look at the staying power. He's been around for how long? There is something to this guy. I, I've always liked our truth, honestly. I wasn't a big K Quick guy. But, and, uh, and again, it gives people the chance to be on television that aren't normally on television. Exactly, again. because look, you start to see Titus O'Neil again. Now. <laughs> uh, Jinder Mahal, who actually I just. I mean, how many Mahal times can you have. Around. These guys running through the arena chasing after the champion, I mean, it's going to be like every week. They need to get a little bit more creative than just having some... Yeah, that's what, and that's what I don't like about it. I, I'd like to see them actually... And they have. I mean, they've kind of... There have been some matches, some actual matches. I, I get it. But I'd like to see something... You know, it's like they make it a big deal every time they put them in a tag match or something. Oh, well, the, you know, the, the belt won't be... Uh, up for grabs during a match, and then you know they're going to get jumped as soon as the match is over. <laughs> right. That should pretty much just be a thing, and be done. Anytime they have to compete in any non, you know, non-title competition, that's the rule. The belt's not going to be up for grabs. And I mean, let them get out of the arena or something. You know, you, wouldn't you rather see him get jumped going back through the curtain as opposed to just right after the bell rings, he gets he gets attacked or whatever. I kind of like to see more from it. But it's 24-7 means... That is true. That, that is true. And talk, we were talking about relying on the past and whatnot. How about The Undertaker showing up on Raw this week? Oh, game? yeah. I, you know, he sh- he's, he's a legend, and he's been there for so long. He's done so much for that company. It's just... <sighs> It's time. It should have been time at WrestleMania when he lost to Roman. I'll tell you when it hit me. First of all, the Goldberg and the Undertaker was a train wreck oh, from gosh. Jump Street. That match would have been great in 2001. That match would have been decent in 2005. In 2019, mm. Goldberg's in the best shape of his life. I'll give him that. But he's not in the best ring shape of his life. He wasn't the best wrestler to start with. No. So you're having... You're you're relying on a guy who's in his fifties to be hey carry this match because we know he's probably not going to be to carry a match. He hasn't wrestled that's like in forever. Yeah, another guy that's in his fifties. You know, to have to carry them both. It's, it really hit me. It, when it's the more like please please make this stop. Not because the match was so, was so like bad. It was. We're fearing for these people's safety. You asked the Undertaker, and apparently it was horrible because apparently he he was very lit well. He should have. Yeah, I mean he lit into Goldberg after the match. Apparently, and Goldberg knocked himself out. I mean, kudos to Bill for keeping it going. I didn't realize that something went wrong until I just it was just how abrupt that match ended. It was well, just they, such an abrupt well, finish. The weird thing is, supposedly it was supposed to go on for 20 minutes. Now tell me how Who or why they wanted Goldberg to watch Goldberg and The Undertaker for 20 minutes? In, their, that's in, be in, this, in, this, in the state that they're in right now. That's going to be that Triple H Undertaker match from WrestleMania where it was like all like submission holds and whatnot. Yeah. And they just kind of like rested after uh, for five minutes after each move. Gold, I, Goldberg, is, Goldberg is a jackhammer. He can only go for a certain amount of time at a time. So you want him to uh, be against another guy of the same age for 20 minutes? No. It hit can't. me when Undertaker went for old school because I thought to myself, holy shit, Undertaker is old school. 
Look, they're they're calling in. Look, nobody liked this match. They're they're <laughs> calling into the arena to the, to the studio here, folks. We're we're not. <laughs> we're busy. We're not. We're not taking phone calls right now. We'll open the Q and A point later. Ah. It, it just still ring. It's still ringing. They're not. They're not letting us alone. We can't. Boy, we don't edit out either. You know, we'll, we'll call you back. We're in the middle of a show right now. All this high tech equipment. We can't just keep going. Okay. All this high tech equipment. We can't mute the phones. Okay, the tech guy's fired. That's all there is to it. We're gonna replace him. Yeah. I mean, you Did ex- you plan that? What do you expect when you have one of the cats man in the board back there? He's fired. No treats for him tonight. Um, but it hit me. Undertaker went for old school. Christ, Undertaker is old school. Like he's just old. I mean, it's and it's nothing against him. And I think you know what the the pay per view will probably get some buys from it. He beat Roman. Roman Reigns beat him at WrestleMania, and now what? He's returning the favor. I want to see him explain it. Like, holy shit! Here's the Undertaker. Why? Why is that a thing? I want to see them explain this. Here's here's a couple other. Here's one other thing I'd like to see them explain. Why is Shane McMahon have such a high point on the card? Exactly. Why is he getting this push? He doesn't need it. He's not a re- he's not a wrestler. He's winning against guys that. Like he, he beat Roman Reigns with help, but still beat Roman Reigns. No, like hardly anybody beats Roman to Reigns. To gain a TV victory or something like that, to progress a storyline and to lead into a pay per view, like on a go home show or something like that, that's fine. He does not need to be winning marquee matches like this. And, and again, it goes back to the guys that aren't getting used, and they see this non wrestler who's like the boss's I've, son. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know. I, I like Shane. I think in spurts, he he does overwhelmingly well with the skill set that he has. Oh, definitely. However, it's always fun to watch now that go, he's go on, like, coast. almost every week, there's no, just there's too no much. It, yeah, there's no it factor to it. There's no, there's no shock value anymore. Because, I mean, let's face it, Shane does what Shane does. He... he uses what he has to the best of his ability. You know he's going to go through a grueling match. You know he's going to hit that coast-to-coast pop, but you don't want to see it every week. You're every month at a paper. You don't need to. Right. I, I just think Shane, if he's... I, I, he shouldn't be wrestling, like, all this time. This is he's where having a high could, point on the this card. This is where again. you could use a guy like Elias or bring up somebody from NXT. I uh, can't say Lars Sullivan because he's out for uh, several that for a year, I think. Knee injury. He really tore yeah. his knee. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is awesome because and, apparently... And even then, you so know, so. Um, um, to me, personally, I thought Lars was basically Snitsky repackaged. Pretty much, just they always take these guys or or like this, a like a Heidenreich too. Yeah, and do this monster person. You can only have so many monsters. Yeah, you know, what I mean? there can only be so many monsters around at one time. But you know, why not pick a guy like that? You know, unfortunately, the push didn't work. But remember, years ago when Vince McMahon chose Drew McIntyre to be the chosen one. Yes. Didn't really go over, unfortunately. McIntyre's on a hot streak now. It's kind of cool to see him getting used and being pushed the way he is now. And losing, of course. Well. It is what it is. What can you do? But, it, you know, have Shane pick somebody like that and just use them and, make you know, push them at the same time. Right. If you want to have him wrestle a match, occasionally put him in a tag match with him. But, like I said, use a guy you like You mean like the one with the, they're going to have extreme rules? Right. You know, something something along those lines. Do something like that. And, I mean, it. I, I don't know. Like I said, bring a guy up from NXT. You use, you know, somebody like Elias or... I mean, he's a face right now, so it wouldn't work with a guy like Finn Balor. Did you ever notice since uh, he got drafted in SmackDown, you, you really don't see Finn Balor? Anymore? Well, the thing is, it, that has something to do with with Andrade being out too, and they were he was his uh, main uh, competitor. Oh, so they were in a storyline against each other, and since Andrade Andrade's uh, mom and like aunt was was that what it was? I didn't hear. I, I missed this. His his mother died. Oh wow! And then, and then I think his aunt died too. Oh like my God, right, wow! Right next to, in the in the same week or week between, Jesus. and yeah, that's we, why he's not been on TV for a while. He at the five, four, six, and our condolences. <laughs> Definitely, I mean that's terrible. No, that yeah, I, I did not know that. And I, I wondered why Rusev has been off TV so. He much. took. He, he asked he, for leave. Yeah, he took some, which is unfortunately means we miss Lana too. 
Well, uh, to be honest with you, yeah, his contract's I mean, coming up, and I don't think he's going to be back. Just do you, have that do feeling. You think he could be all out? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, I don't know when his contract actually runs out, but it's supposed to be here soon. Hey, you know, Lana will probably go with him. Well, it depends on how long her contract, if their yeah. contract run out in this at the same time. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It was like they really tried to push her a few different times, and it just never took off. Apparently, she's not much of a wrestler. Yeah. You know, okay. But you remember with the whole thing with uh, Ziggler? Yeah. A few years ago, and it was like she was really getting a push. And it looked like she was going to part from uh, from uh, Rusev and kind of do it. And then they just they just halted it. They just Well, kind of now, this is why, and it's going to be to where we're going to talk about another storyline that's kind of happening right now. And we're going to talk about how if they really need to be in a storyline together, the reason why... The Ziggler, Rusev, Lana, Summer Rae storyline ended is because Rusev and Lana got engaged in real life. Of course. And yeah. so whatever the story was, I mean, it's not believable because they're already engaged in real life. Kind of at the Summer time. Rae too, speaking of which. But yeah. Anyway, um, so. Probably a little class at, to the TV. At, we, uh, as I was going to get at with another storyline that they're decide to uh, give us uh, with Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch and uh, WWE has acknowledged that they are a real life couple they, they acknowledged that like a couple weeks ago when everybody else knew yeah we saw the uh, the, the, the Instagram Twitter post the Instagram post yeah so now apparently they're well. They're in a tag team match against Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans at Extreme Rules, where they're, both of their titles will be on the line. Yeah, so it's uh, the two of them taking on Lacey Evans in a ring post. Basically, I, I do not like Baron Corbin. There is nothing entertaining about this guy. Well, th- think about the Stomping Grounds main event that they had. He he picks the special guest referee. He picks Lacey Evans because it, if you're in the know. Because Lacey Evans uh, fought Becky Lynch as the first match of the pay per view, and like, oh, they only mentioned this like six times. Oh well, Becky Lynch is Seth Rollins is uh, Uh, right. Yeah, like, I don't know. It just, I'm as surprised they actually agreed to. I guess it's the kind of thing they figure, being it was put out there, instead of trying to act like it never happened, they're just gonna just. Steer right at it. Yeah, but there are there are actual like married couples that aren't together. Like is Lena Vega and uh, uh, Alistair Black are married in real life, and they're not. They don't put them together. No, they're married. They're actually married. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So like, what's going to happen there once she comes back? You know, are they going to do? How are they going to work around that? I just. I guess you acknowledge it. Because how can you not? Because With of social, social media, media. Being such a big influence. However, nowadays, exactly. it's so easy to separate that because it's not like they're an actual married couple or anything. I get if they're married, but if they're like together, like as a, in a relationship, yeah. It, it what if what if it ends? Then exactly. What? Yeah. How do you how do you keep that going, especially if it ends badly? Right. But now and now the stipulation uh, in the tag match, uh, both their titles are on the line. Yeah, they they won't. If we're thinking about it, they're not gonna lose them. I don't think so. If anybody does, it unfortunately it's gonna be Becky Lynch. No, but I, I, aren't aren't both of them at oh, the do same they, time? Do they both. Well, then yeah. So it's more like the 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 heels have nothing to lose. I like Lacey Evans. I, I'll say that I, I, I like Lacey. The Evans. character is good. Yeah. This wrestling skills. I think they brought her up too early. You think? She should have been in NXT a little bit longer because they. It seemed like that she was there and then she wasn't. Well, and that may be why they kind of just had her show up and talk for so many weeks. I guess. Still well, then they, they, she wasn't even talking. She just went up to the out to the uh, apron and walked walked there and then came back. That was it for like weeks. Yeah, I I, I don't know where they're going with it. I just. Oh, I just so much Baron Corbin. I can't handle it. 
So we've been talking for, about wrestling for 40 minutes, and if you've stayed with us for that whole time, we're thank here. you. Congratulations, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna stop talking about wrestling. We we're gonna switch gears. Um, Dan, you want to talk about any movies you've seen? Um, it's been a lot of a lot of really cool movies coming out. Stuff's coming up. We haven't done. God, it has it been three months since our last show? Yes, wow. it's been three months. We've you know we've had Avengers Endgame, which was absolutely epic. If you haven't seen it now, I encourage you to come out from under your rock. A lot has changed. We're not quite the flying cars yet, but we're getting there. Um, come out of your rock. Go see the movie. Actually, you can go see it now with six more minutes of. Uh, deleted scenes and whatnot than the previous uh, theater run. Basically, they're trying to get Avengers to surpass Avatar as the highest grossing movie ever. Uh, they may have already done it. I'm not sure. but uh, you know. If only Kevin was here, he'd know. Or Jason. Oh, yeah, uh, Jason or Kevin, exactly. Uh, we actually may see Jason later, but not in time for the show, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what they're doing. We've got, um, just kind of sticking with the comic book thing first. Spider-Man uh, Far From Home comes out on July 2nd. I believe it opens Wednesday, which is the third, but it'll come out uh, for Tuesday night. You know, sneaks and all that, it'll be on Tuesday. Really looking forward to that. I'm will Jason be camped out at the theater? I don't think he will camp out at the theater like certain people did for Christmas <laughs> this week. That's a whole story. We'll get to that. That's yeah, we'll get we'll fare. get to that later. That's a little more local fare, but uh, yeah, I don't know if he'll camp out, but I guarantee he'll be there Tuesday night. I'd be very surprised if he's not there Tuesday night. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I won't go the first night. I'll probably go that weekend. I've got a nice long weekend coming from work, so I'll get a chance to check that out. Uh, some other stuff. I'm hoping to check out Toy Story 4. I do believe this is going to be the last one in the franchise. Really cool that they got a lot of the cast back that you know Tom Hanks and uh, Tim Allen are still dedicated. Well, to I stuff. heard that um, they pieced together Don Rickles. For Rickles? Yes, they didn't actually piece together Don Rickles, but um, <laughs> no. You know, unfortunately, Mr. Rickles he is pa- he has passed. He's, yeah, but as uh, for those who don't know, he voiced Potato Head mm-hmm. in the toy in the other three movies. But apparently, they have uh, pieced together voice, and that's one of the things I'm interested in seeing how it, how it flows. Right. But he will still voice Potato Head in this new movie. Uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if Slinky Dog will be back, who unfortunately, uh, his original voice uh, voice talent passed on. Jim Varney, a.k.a. Ernest. Uh, it, it, five bonus points if you can give me Ernest's full name. Put you on the spot. What, Ernest P. Worrell? Very good. There it is. Yeah, that's right. Ernest Jim Varney's been uh, been going for a long time. Yes, yeah. Well, you figure there was a big gap between Toy Story 2 and 3. But did they he, did they use him? No, three. Oh. No, he. Uh, they actually use who kind of sounds enough like him. I can I can get this. I can't think of the uh, person's full name, but if you remember Boy Meets World, he uh, the person that voiced Slinky Dog was the one that played Sean's dad, Blake. Oh, uh, Blake. Uh, Blake. Is it Blake Barris or something? I no, no, no. Know. It's Blake Clark. Maybe. I think it's Blake Clark. And yeah, now nobody calls. Yeah, nobody calls in with the answer. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, he did. Which his voice kind of, kind of is in the same realm of a of a Jim Varney, you know, of, of Ernest. But uh, just really cool that a lot of the cast is still devoted to the movie and all that. I'm really looking forward to seeing. It. I do believe this is the last one. Um, this is like a Disney Renaissance coming up because you have that, you have Aladdin, and you have Aladdin, the Lion which King. Is out, the Lion King comes out. That's another one that's coming out uh, in July that I am super excited about. Loved the original Lion King from back in '94. Um, the new Aladdin was excellent. Uh, Carrie and I both really enjoyed that. Uh, what do the, you think about these uh, companies coming out with remakes like this? Do you do you like it? Or? I, you know, more than I thought. More than I thought. It's really not going to start hurting me until they start doing cartoons into live action movies because I hate that. Yeah, the, I it hate doesn't. That. Usually it doesn't translate very well. Looking at you, George of the Jungle and Dudley Do Right. Oh God! Um, yeah, we could never get that Super Chicken movie off the ground. Was Mr. Long. Magoo one too? Yes, it was back in the mid '90s. Leslie. Nielsen, yes, he did Mr. play. That's right. Mr. Lally, thought, uh, I thought he did. 
Mr. Uh, the hell was the name? Um, Frank Drebin from Naked Gun. Naked Gun. That's I couldn't. God, it wouldn't come to me. Look at it, Naked Gun there. But uh, yeah, and actually, you know, the blind community got a uh, little little uh, heated about the Mr. Magoo movie. I believe it was the NFB, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, one of the blindness organizations, and it hits close to home for me. That's why I bring it up. I uh, had a problem because they said it portrayed uh, blind people in a bad because you know Mr. Magoo was poorly sighted. And it, I just, come on, folks. That, that's what the whole point of this. If you're going to do that, you have to attack the whole cartoon and the entire uh, Quincy Magoo character. Yeah, yeah, I first named it. That's right. We're like that. Well, Flintstones uh, were another one. You know, I didn't mind that, that one. Was, a, that was a little better. The first one. but The uh, second one, Viva no. Rock Vegas. Forget that. I like the guy that played Fred. He was also in uh, Still Standing, I think the TV you show mean, was. You mean Mark Addy? Yeah, is that his, I didn't I know his that's name. His name. You know, he played Bill on uh, Still Standing or whatever. He but, he is he's a British actor, which wow. is weird because of he plays uh, in Still Standing. He plays a guy from Chicago. Yeah. So yeah, I just but that is such a funny show. That the little girl. It's kind of like creepy. It's kind of like Bob Hoskins who played, played uh, Eddie and Roger Rabbit. And then he was uh, Super, Super, Super Mario. Mario. <laughs> he drank a lot during that movie. I, I read an article. You mean uh, during little, Super Mario little Brothers? Little fun fact, yes. During Super Mario Brothers, a uh, little fun fact. Do you blame him? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, it was one of the worst movies. That, that ever. movie was just. Ugh. But yeah, another one where I own again, it. again animated live action. Yeah, but I own it. I own Super Mario Brothers, so I'm not too proud to admit it. Um, was that free? Uh, I had to pay them actually. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they had to pay me actually. Give oh me five. My. Give me five dollars and a Mario poster. Oh, uh, no, and, and some Nintendo. And everybody shit. was so excited for that movie too. I remember. It just, I remember ugh. it. It was. Just, oh man. They were gonna make a sequel, weren't they? Oh God! I, I thought they were. were. Good. And then they, then they, uh, I think, I think it may have been planned, and then they realized how, how bad, bad it was. was. I guarantee like, you, nah. I guarantee you, Hoskins wouldn't have did it. Right. They would have had to wave so much money in front of him. But uh, I read an article. He said it was probably the worst project he ever did, and that there was a lot of drinking on set. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it was what it was. You know, they, if you if you're a kid and you watch it, it's it's freaking awesome. That's just like the Masters of the Universe movie. That was a pile of crap too, in my opinion. Skeletor stole the show in that. All all these things that you watched when you were a kid, and now you watch them again, you're like, why was why, yeah, the, why did I like that so but much? But the Wizard still holds up for me. It still does. That's right, Fred Savage and the Wizard. That's right. I think it was cool because of the uh, game tournament. Yeah, and the different games, and that was the first look at Mario Three, and yeah. but all the different games that he played. I, that movie was just man, that had it. It, it all. was a Nintendo marketing, and it worked, I'm movie. sure. And then I mean, you had Fred Savage, who was in everything back then. Fred Savage is on some like host of some game show now. <sighs> yeah, he's done it all. Yeah, I mean, Fred Savage has done it all. He's a national treasure. Um, Speaking of uh, game shows, have you seen the new Press Your Luck and Card Sharks? I have. We watched the first week uh, that they were on, and I enjoyed them both. Uh, I like the added... Ad. Did you watch it? I watched Press Your Luck, most of it, and I watched a little bit of Card Sharks. I like the bonus round with Press Your Luck. I don't. Oh, really? I not, don't. Not I don't. Well, it's too long. It's way too long. It's like, what... Five rounds or something. It does. Kind of, yeah, they could. They could tweak it. If a you're little. gonna do, if you're gonna do the pressure luck bone, if you're gonna have a bonus round, one round, most. I can get that. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be like these tiers where it's you're playing the game, but you're playing it itself. Is am, am I yeah, right in this? Because they could, you, they you could. get like. You only can do, get four whammies before something yeah. happens. Is that right? Something like that. I mean, it, you go through each round, and I mean, you know, you essentially, I mean, you're essentially going to get a whammy around. You know, if you can no, avoid I, I just, something. I, I, but if they're going to do it, one round. It could be tweaked. You're right, but I like the concept. I like that. You know, it is a little something new to the traditional pressure luck. I like it. And card sharks was not bad either. I don't watch the new match game because I, I never liked the match game. Uh, I never liked Match Game. Plus, it's just not the same without Gene Rayburn and uh, Charles Nelson Riley yeah, and I've Brett Summers it. and all them. That's right, and Betty White and uh, Betty before, White's still here. Before he got the Family Feud gig, um, Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson was on there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I only saw a little bit of the new Card Sharks. What is it like? It's his seven. Like seven cards in the run instead of five. That you know what I can't remember. I think it is. I was pretty tired and I I dozed through a good bit of it, but I did see I saw more pressure luck. But I like card sharks, so 
I don't know. It's just a basic game. It's it's questions. It's fun. It's it flows easy. I've I've been a big pressure level. The best games are ones that you can play at home. They're simple enough to follow along with, and it, they're all overall fun. Yeah, the pyramid was always a great game. Yeah, you can you can follow along with it at home. You know? And I'll tell you the one that I was like, I'd like to see them reboot it. It's been re- redone a few times, but it's been a while. Uh, Hollywood Squares. I love Hollywood Squares. I'm I'm a little surprised they haven't, but I guess only because it's been rebooted again, as you said, so many times. Yeah, I mean, that if we can you just, just get rid of Tom Fairs, well, the, the problem comes to where, he, like, game shows with like Pressure Luck and Card Sharks, you don't rely on a lot of celebrity input. Match game, you do because you get you like, have the celebrity sick. panel, but. It's you just got a Elizabeth matter of, Banks hosting uh, uh, Pressure Love. Do, do you do you like how she's doing? It I was, think she's doing really well. Yeah, it, she was cool in the first. And one. I she think really she's authentic in. It's like you would have Peter Tamarkin hosting the show. A lot of the things that she does, she puts her own emphasis on. Yeah, but, but it she flows kind of like how it how it went. Yeah, exactly. I think he'd be happy with it. Yeah, so uh, you're definitely. Not afraid, you're not a fan of. Uh, the, the new Pressure Love when it came out in the early 2000s with uh, Todd You mean Todd Newton? Newt- it was yeah. good. It was a different board, though. The, the, if you're going to bring it back, you have to have the classic board. That's a plus. Yeah, it was It was a little different when he did the, it. And you had the live action. It, it's, it plays too. like the old game. It's, yeah, it's this, excellent. I, I, do, I, I really dig this. I think they really have something if yeah, they just keep continuing what they do. And I like Family Feud, but I'm kind of glad they've kind of cooled back on the Celebrity Family Feud they were doing late night, you know, in, in the, the prime time slot or whatever. Keep that where it is. Steve right. Harvey's still, I mean, Steve Harvey's the man. He, he's cool. But, uh, you know, who would we get to host the new Holly, the new, new Hollywood Squares? Because, yeah, we're, I, I'm, I'm, I'm relieving Tom Verger out of his duties as of... You got to have a tie-in with someone, right? Yeah, and I don't believe Shadow Stevens is still alive. Isn't that... The, is the late, he, he, no, he's. I think he's alive, but no, I would not want him to host what the show. John Davidson. Let's just bring back John Davidson. He's alive. However, I was thinking about you know the host that does the game night, the Hollywood game night. Oh, on NBC. Who is that? Isn't that Jane Lynch or something? I'm not sure. I feel like that she would be a, a choice at least. It'd be cool. They've never had a female host before. That would be kind That's, of. That's. Yeah, I, I, be, and it's not like they have to have a female host, but I I think she'd be a decent enough yeah choice. I'm trying to that. think of one of the old squares that could uh, that could come in and do it. I mean, mm. we could always make your day. I mean, you know, we could find someone who has hosted uh, a, a TV game show in her time. Um, you know, you could always bring. You know where I'm going with this. You could always bring Vicky. You mean Lawrence. Vicky Lawrence? Yes, you could bring Vicky Lawrence in to host it. I don't dislike Vicky Lawrence. I just like dislike the character. <laughs> oh, but come on! What would be great? How great would it be? One She's week she host. could host it as Vicky Lawrence, and the next week she could host it as Mama, and you could uh, alternate. Uh, or oh, let's just really go camera magic and have Vicky Lawrence host it and have Mama as one of the squares. <laughs> great would that be? No, I think that'd be really lame. No, I think that, it would that'd be, be terrible. Really lame. <laughs> that'd be funny. But uh, you know, she of course hosted Win, Lose, or Draw. I'm surprised they haven't tried to revive that. Especially in the, with all the graphics and all they could do now, and just the, the, the like a video board instead yeah, of a, right the, the different things that they could come up with. But when I, mean, it, I think fun. it would be something that um, with with ABC doing this game show renaissance, it seems like it may have been something that uh, they had in mind. Like as it was always fun to see how how good or how bad the, the celebrities would draw. You yeah, know, like how how much they'd be able to put into it with the time that they were given. When Lose or Draw was a cool show. That that had its time. You know, let's let's see what else could what else could we revive? We could revive Tic Tac Doe. Mm. Or not. May I don't know. I, I think I'm just trying to think of game shows that they could who, do. Who hosted that? Tic Tac Doe. You mean Wink Martindale? It was Wink Martindale, that's right. It was the first... Uh, the the incarnation that we know about. Then it then it went to USA and it That was, was when they had the dragon was, and the, the Yeah, knight. that was got, stunk. The dragon wrapped. Yeah, that was a did. wrapping dragon. I mean that that was not I, I don't know. Somebody was smoking something then. That was around the same time I remember watching uh uh Trivial Pursuit. 
Right. I believe USA had yeah. that as well. USA used to have a great afternoon game show block. You had uh, that. You had Trivial Pursuit. You had Scrabble with uh, with Chuck Woolery. Uh, there's had, another game, Scrabble, yeah, Scrabble kind that, of. That'd be it, a good one. And you could have some fun with that. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of brought that back at one point. They already did Password here recently. Not, like, really, really recently, but they did That's do Password. That was about 10 years ago. It was on, I remember that day. And it was cool because I actually had Betty White on there. Mm-hmm. That was cool. I forget who hosted it. But, it was, that was uh, Regis. Regis filled that. That's right. Out. And that's one of the things I didn't mind him doing. They stopped with Who Wants to Be a Millionaire finally. Has it finally it's ended? It's finally gone. Wow. Who was the last host? Was it still Cedric? Ooh, I thought it was the guy from The Bachelor. Oh, that's right. Yeah, said Chris Harrison. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, uh, USA's lineup was great because they showed the pyramid, they showed pressure, and love. They uh, they had it all. That that was that was excellent. I recently discovered there's a there's a uh, another game show network on over the air TV. I think you mean Buzzer. Buzzer. Yeah, yeah. They Buzzer. host a lot of uh, game shows that. You know, aren't weren't on G or they were on GSN before, and they kind of went away from them. Well, you you can catch reruns of Supermarket Sweep with with oh, David Rubric. Rubric, yeah, yeah, he's still alive. Um, he's still. He's still I thought alive. they were trying to revive that game show too. I thought I heard something I'd, about that at one point, and I'm waiting for him to bring back Shop that you drop. They might as well. You can't have one without the other. Exactly. A lifetime. I remember always showed them hand in hand. That was that was. They should fun. bring them back to Lifetime. That would yes. be perfect. But the one that I got excited about was that you can actually catch reruns of Classic Concentration with Alex Trebek. Now it's a that, that I would think that would be a good show to. That bring would back. be fun. Yeah, you could have a lot of fun with that and do the different puzzles, especially again with like a video screen. And, he, and even so, if, if Trebek wanted to do it again, he could. Trebek is a workhorse. Yes, man. he and is. There again, Trebek is <laughs> havoc in the studio. I'm telling you, he fell asleep behind that mixing board. Uh, uh, Trebek is just a, is awesome. He basically, I mean, what guy comes out and said he had what stage four cancer, yeah, pancreatic yeah. cancer, something like that, and says I will continue to fight. Out. I mean, he's going to be right there in it. Be on Jeopardy. Yeah, all, just all time. still, just keep on doing it, man. Again. Uh, uh, did you watch any Jeopardy at all with the run of uh, the, the most recent? No, I heard game? about it, but he did really well. He it was he was really put you in the mind of watching Ken Jennings when Ken went on his tear back in uh, back in uh, early. Well, that's crazy so. because they can win like what thirty thousand uh, like show oh, or something he he like more than that. Plus this, fi- like fifty yeah, or something. This guy had some remarkable uh, victories. He would have, I think, surpassed Ken Jennings in about half the time. Jeez. Ken Jennings won, I think, what, 72 games, I think, or 74? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, this gentleman won, and I can't think of his name, and it's terrible. James, uh, James. Holzoffel or something? something? Yeah, I mean, but and actually he made a donation to Trebek or something like that, or to cancer mm-hmm. or something in Trebek's name, which I thought was really classy. Um but uh, he had won, I believe, 31 games or 32 or something like that. And, I mean, he just had it. He had such a tremendous amount of money. Dude was a beast. He really was. It was so kind of weird, though, because I, I joked with Carrions, and I think he threw that last game because he even made a smaller wager than he usually did and all that stuff. He could have won. Could have won that game. But, I mean, what do I know? But, uh, no, it would be really cool to see some of these. And I See, I would put Wheel of Fortune to bed because, as I mentioned before, I don't care for Pat Sajak. <laughs> Keep Vanna White around. Let Vanna White host Hollywood Squares. They'll torture you and let Pat Sajak host instead. Oh, see? It? Oh, I mean, if something would happen, they'd move Jeopardy, too, and they'd put them on back-to-back just, to, just an hour of hell. Um, <laughs> would, you, would you bring Alf back to Hollywood? Let Alf host Hollywood Squares. Mm, I don't know if that's such a good idea. To be like Alf, is to, Alf is unfortunately mourning the loss of one of his own. Uh, we had some sad news in uh, Hollywood this week. Max Wright, formerly, Willie. Uh, formerly uh, one William Tanner, um, <laughs> one uh, Willie Tanner passed away. Age seventy-five, I believe. No, I thought it was seventy-two. Seventy-two is in his seventies. Um, battle with cancer, unfortunately. We lost a few people this week, sadly enough. Uh, Beth Chapman. 
wife of uh, Dog, Dog the Bounty Dog Hunter. The Bounty Hunter uh, also passed away from cancer. So it's cancer sad. sucks. Everybody yeah, knows it. Absolutely. Very uh, very sad. Uh, sad week in Hollywood. But it's not going to be a sad week for you. Sad week, sad day, sad night because you got some of these Krispy Kreme donuts over here. Yes, we well, we mentioned the new Krispy Kreme. Uh, some people camped out overnight in a tent uh, uh, here in uh, beautiful Hagerstown, Maryland, to uh, wait for the opening of Krispy Kreme, all for, for some free donuts. Yeah. Uh, I think if you were like the first one or I don't know if it was the first dozen or something you got them uh, a dozen free for per week for the whole year and if you were like the first 120 you got one dozen per month Could for you the year imagine? camping out <laughs> in a tent overnight for donuts <laughs> for, for donuts I've already had okay I wouldn't. I, I definitely sure wouldn't camp for Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, I'm not. I'm not down in Krispy Kreme. They're okay. good, but I'm not going to stay overnight just to get them that I can break, already buy. I'm not going to brave the elements for these things. No. Like I. Because it it rained overnight that. Yeah, that night. and it's freaking hot this week. It, and guys, I left work on Wednesday, and all I wanted in the world was was a shower and a nap, like. <laughs> But no, I have to go camp out for donuts. <laughs> That'll be the best damn donut in the world. Well, they they're good if they're hot. I mean, I put them among the top. Yeah, the glaze. I mean, trust me, I had a cake batter earlier, and I'm gonna just. I think I'm gonna have me another one at the end of this podcast. <laughs> trust me, I uh, I'm I'm all in, and and you know they're great, but I'm not camping out. There needs to be a like, okay. Like, what is one? Th- what is something you would camp out overnight for? And what have you camped out for anything? Not necessarily overnight, but have you waited in line for uh, for something? Well, you remember the PlayStation Two debacle? Oh, that was first day of school too. No, it wasn't the first or day. No, of school. it was around that time though. It, it was. was uh, it was a month after that. Yeah, but didn't we blame Doink the Clown? Wasn't that some of his shenanigans? Yeah. I believe that's he what stole, the... Didn't he almost steal your car too? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he broke my contact lens. That's oh, what that's it was. Right. Uh, that's right. Yeah, he. I tell you, he's a nefarious bastard. Um, but but uh, yes, I did. I did wake up really, really early to get in line for a PS2 when it came out, and I didn't get one. So, Sold the last one right in front of you, didn't they? Uh, no, they handed out the last ticket a couple people in front of me. Oh, so I know. just waited in line till about, I don't know, 6, 7 o'clock, and then I just went to school. It's a shame. It's, it, it's a, you know. Because I thought, you know what, maybe I'll go to Target and see if there's anybody there and see what's up, and then, yep. Would you have taken out an old lady for a ticket, though? That's the question. Uh, Would you have run down Grandma for, no, a, for a PS2? No. All right. That's, no. that's, uh, you're, you're a good person. I just had to check one. And, I mean, I got, I got it the day after Christmas that year. All right. At I Target. Just, I, so. had to, I had to check your moral compass and, and see. What, do you think somebody returned one? Like you saw someone trying to return donuts? Uh I Is don't that know. how you got it the day after Christmas? No, it was a new one. They oh, had, they okay. got a fresh shipment in. Oh, that's good. The day after Christmas. Where do they know their market? And now we're uh, talking about the PS5. the PS5 coming out. Yeah. I believe next year. So what is this thing going to do? Why do I want a PS5 over my PS4 that I don't have? Um, I've only read a little bit about it. I mean, I did hear that I think it's going to be backwards compatible. Yes, you that can is play key. All the games? How far back? Do we know? I know PS4 for sure. I don't know about other ones. I, if, for me, and I was talking about this with someone at work, if you're going to have brand loyalty to Sony, make it compatible to every Go uh, back generation. all the way. Yep. Go back all the way. Yep. Well, remember when the original PS3 came out, it was backwards compatible, but then they and brought then out they new ones. And then they changed it, and then they weren't. Yeah, yes. They brought out new I ones. Had one, I, say, you had one I had one that was not. backwards compatible, and then it died. So I can't. It's a, that's it. I'm done. And now the PS4 is not backwards compatible. It never was, was it? They, they I don't. Never, I don't think yeah. it was. It may have been like maybe the first. And that's a shame. Bit, I, I really feel like you. I feel like it should have been. You know that really should. And maybe have been. it's something with the technology. I don't know, but that could they, be. It's, it, it's an untapped market. That they it seems have. like something that could easily be rectified. But uh, anything else that you that you waited in line for besides Vicky Lawrence tickets? <laughs> um, no. Um. <laughs> oh man. Uh, 
I'm trying no, to it's think. A woman show. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like you mean, like waited in line, anything in yeah, advance yeah. for? Yeah, yeah. Game system tickets, the concert tickets, um, anything. PS. I mean, if PS2 comes to mind off the bat. Uh, man, I don't know. I can't really think of anything that I. I, I I'm just not. I guess a guy that likes to wait in line. I don't like to wait in line at the Olive Garden for like an hour for food that I already know what tastes like. Yeah, there's there's a statute of limitations on that. Um, I don't mind a 20 minute wait. I can sit down somewhere, just go outside and chill until my little buzzer goes off. Yeah, the, there's this crazy thing about all these restaurants that are out around and you can go somewhere else where you can go right in to eat. You know? Yeah, I mean, there's you, you get over a half hour and I'm probably going to walk away. Honestly, it's not that important. Because... And you have to consider that you time frame is worried. longer than a yeah. half hour because you got to sit down, uh-huh. you got to order, yeah, exactly. and then they got to make it. So it's like a, an hour, maybe now, an hour and a half. If you want to send me out a box, uh, a basket of breadsticks while I wait, you might get me 45 minutes. <laughs> um, maybe. Uh, the only thing that I've waited for uh, when I was in Canada, I stood out in the frigid cold uh, starting at around 3 o'clock in the morning. And I think they opened. I either way, it was around three or four, and I think they started giving the things out at like five five thirty uh, for wristbands to meet uh, future WWE now WWE Hall of Famer, but not then uh, Bret Hart. I stood in line to get wristbands to come back later to meet Bret Hart. I mean, geez, he's a national he's a national hero. Though. Oh, he is. So he, he should run for prime minister. He'd probably get it. He'd, he'd probably win. He'd be a lock. Um, but yeah, it was it was totally by coincidence. I went and sticking with the wrestling theme, we took a walk to the local music store near her uh, apartment. I was getting the latest uh, TNA theme CD, uh, which was uh, Third Degree Burns, I believe, was the CD. Third um, Degree Montgomery Burns. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be another CD. Uh, oh, God, I don't want that. They, you can have that. <laughs> but. <laughs> that's, that's that's horrific, but jeez, uh, oh man! But threw you off there, didn't? I? Yes, you did. Yes, I just I've, I've lost it all. You're just mad because you didn't get the Vicky Lawrence tickets. Mm. You're just mad because I've seen her and you haven't. Uh, like, yeah, we offered. Hey, yeah, my fault you didn't want to come. But uh, no, we uh, we picked up the CD. We were walking back, and we were both thirsty. We stopped in this little bookstore uh, named Chapters, I believe it's called. To get a uh, get a drink, we were sitting there, and she looked over on the wall and had a poster promoting it that you could meet uh, Bret Hart. His new book was about to come out, and they were doing uh, part of a tour. It was part of the book tour. So, like I said, you had to line up. I forget what time they opened. It was either like five thirty or six, and she got off work at like quarter after two, two thirty in the uh, in the morning. She worked night work. Uh, we she came home. We got ready. We walked down there, stood in the cold ass weather because this was in uh, December of 06 or 07 and uh, we stood in the cold and waited I got my wristband and went home and waited Uh, the people that were at the front of the line they got the best deal but they had to stay the whole day at the bookstore I remember it they had to basically to get the perks and all that they had to get their things and then I think they were let in but they had to stay there all day and they got like I think a private meet and greet session with them and everything like that. It was like a whole big package deal. For wow! Them. But I got in and actually I got I think a little further ahead in line. Um, being blind does have its perks. People were good to me. They got me right up to meet him. Uh, Brett was very nice. Uh, signed my books um, and got to talk to him for a couple seconds and then went out and went back home. But it was well worth the wait in the cold. It was it was really cool. He's always been one of my favorites, and it was a it was a great story. Mm-hmm. But that's I mean, yours that's, turned good. Mine was bad. You know. Yeah, I mean that's, that's what happens when you try and wait in line for something that people want, and you know. Well, I mean, let's say they weren't going to run out of Bret Hart. I mean, that was, was <laughs> no. there's enough Bret Hart for everybody. <laughs> but, um, but no, it it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. I think that's really all I've waited outside, like really waited in line for. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. If I'm forgetting something, I'm sure if Kevin hears this, he'll tell me. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was it was quite the experience. Yeah, yeah. I 
Well, when the PS5 comes out, I don't know if I'll be waiting in line or anything. I know you'll get one, though, of course. I I think it's... Yeah, I, I'm i thinking... I, and, you know, for a long time, I wasn't really into video games, and then I kind of just started getting back yeah, into it. Yeah, you kind of fell just out of for a while. I just... just I just was watching guys that were playing these video games, and I was like, well, uh, maybe I'll just get it. I mean, I'm like, what, 30-some years old? I'm out on my own. I'm not really doing anything else, so... I personally think you need to start a side project where you uh, YouTube yourself playing video games, because from what I hear, it's quite the experience. First off, I've looked into it. I see. However, uh-huh. there's a couple things I should... It... it, it it can be expensive. Like you need to get a certain like like a computer that has good specs for you if you're going to stream like that. Okay, yeah, you need. And you that's need good costs a good amount of money. I got you. I, the, the computer I have is good, but it's not set for like streaming like that. You don't have a gaming uh, rig and all that kind no. of stuff. I, I see no. what you're saying. That's kind of part of reason why like, like, I. GLXPS I mean, the first thing was to buy this microphone, and then. When I got my um, uh, my bonus at work after I they, the company got transferred over, I was gonna look into getting a computer. But then I just kind of I don't know, just kind of fell by the wayside. Life, yeah, life, and, life and, and it's it's a lot. Yeah. And, and editing any like YouTube videos like like I do with the video food box, it takes time. And it does. Some yeah. of it, I mean, if you if it's formulaic, like we have for that um it takes less time than it would but still it takes it takes time to to edit the video render it and then put it on youtube but i hear i mean just going back to the basis of it i hear it's quite the experience and uh, if, if, you, if you get a good neighbor, if you get a good audience to do if i were to ask your neighbors uh, about the <laughs> sounds that come out of your out of your house while you're playing video games i mean what, what were some of the things they would tell me? What I mean, if I see any movie all year, is this the one to see? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that uh, they stay within like a thousand foot radius away I mean, from whatever. I understand I mean. the kids pass by you a trick or treat and say that's where that guy lives. <laughs> I mean, that, that's where that guy killed his family. I mean, I'm, that, you know, that's like they they. I hear there's just a lot of sounds coming out of there. I may have wished death on some computer players okay. in, in, in over time, but oh wait! Computer, stop! I tell you, you and your computer, stop! You and your your uh, I, I, lady that a. that lady, thing lady a. that that um, thing. I, I don't know who rigged this studio tonight, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm checking this place. <laughs> we have all so these distractions, and it's a little. Those are ringing, cats are jumping around. I mean, people are falling asleep at the switchboard. That guy's still fired, but uh, but yeah, no, so it's. Uh, I just hear it's I, I take I take off like minutes off my life every time I play. I seem hey, like you know you, everybody needs a stress release. Yeah, and that's kind of how I see it. I mean, it's better that than something else, right? That's very true. That, that's very true. Just you know, say no. I mean, to it's drugs. not say like no it's not like playing tennis and taking your shoes off in the middle of. The- <laughs> No, and, you know, I mean, I you know I hear people do that. If only Kevin were here, he'd corroborate that yes, story. Yes, and and then. Or Jason doing Tai Chi in the middle of a tennis match. And that was that was good too. Yeah, or like the guy that he had I to used center to, himself. Like the guy that I used to work with that at one time was uh, standing around doing uh, practice in his karate uh, while the machine was down. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. I I just told Cobra Kai it was time to get back to work. Different and, strokes uh, for different folks. And, and, of course. You know, we all we all have our thing. Mm-hmm. That's what can I say? Yeah. So. So yeah, I mean. <laughs> But I think this is a pretty good, very healthy episode. I mean, we're going I mean, on I, what? I told you, it's almost gonna... it's over an hour for sure. Yeah, we we've clocked an hour. I told and you. And there was so much more we could actually could get into, like you know, the Toronto Raptors winning the NBA Finals. Hats off to them knocking out the Warriors. I like Steph Curry and I like the Warriors, but hats off to the Raptors. Well, good by the them. time the uh, series ended, they were the walking wounded because Kevin Durant tears his Achilles and uh, Clay Thompson tears his ACL. So there you go. Jeez, man, I think God, it's over. 
and they're both free agents too. So uh, I think they, they did it on purpose. Um, no. Uh, well, of course, it, we have the Stanley Cup champions as well. The St. Louis Blues the for Blues the first time ever. Yeah, there you go. And the Raptors for the first time ever. Yes. So, yeah. Very cool. Very and cool. it went north of the border for the first time ever. That's it, which is really cool. I mean, that that's a big deal. That's that's pretty. It was a re- really big deal back in the uh, '90s when the CFL expanded to uh, America and the Baltimore Stallions won yes, the Grey Cup. Uh, and it was, was like a national tragedy for them. Yeah, that was basically, hey, Baltimore, we're not giving you an NFL team, but we will sure as shit throw you a CFL team. And they were the best CFL team. I went to one of their games. They were they were loaded. And uh, six people were like, yay, and that, that was it. I remember watching their the Grey Cups that they were in. I, I, you know, I remember the uh, first one. Um, when they they were well, they, they tried to use the Colts. Couldn't use the Colts. No, no, I remember that. They they, they did it for a little them. bit, and then the NFL was like, "Oh no, you they can't tried." Do that. But so they were they were, they were the Baltimore CFLs first first year. The CFLs. They were the CFLs, and they get, they reached the Grey Cup, and the Grey Cup was that year in um, uh, British Columbia, and they played the Lions. Not the Detroit Lions. If you're Might as well. Detroit Lions. <laughs> no, no. Not they, those they Lions. never go to the. They never go to the championship game. Not those Lions. <laughs> but the British Columbia Lions and uh, the the Lions. BC Lions. Yeah, the, the BC Florida. Lions. Uh, I think they they won that year uh, field goal at the end of the game. So the sta- uh, the CFLs lost the first year. Second year they. Uh, Played the Calgary Stampeders with Doug Flutie, and they won that game. I think they won. It was not like really close, but it wasn't really lop- lopsided. And they won that year, and then immediately they moved to Mon- uh, Montreal and became the Alouettes. Hmm. Yeah, because the Ravens were coming to Baltimore, so they had to move. Yes. Yeah, Baltimore. I I still remember in '94, I believe it was when we added the Panthers and Jaguars. It was '95. '95. Okay, '94 when the news came out. Yeah, that's when it started. And I was in Baltimore at the time, uh, doing some. Uh, that was at the, the School for the Blind at that time. And oh, that city was just so sure they were going to get a get a team. I mean, how could Paul Tagliabue? Yeah, there's the name. And they were putting the submissions hmm. in the Taglia box. I remember that. It was terrible. But, uh, yeah, how could they get overlooked after the travesty that occurred in the 80s when the Colts left in the middle of the night? And first the announcement came that the, uh, that the uh, Panthers got the team. Then there had to be, like, another vote. And it just, oh, there was no way they were going to get left out. And then we got the Jaguars, and then they damn near burned Baltimore to the ground. Do you remember what, the, what name they were going to call the Baltimore team? No. They were going to call them the Baltimore Bombers. Oh, well, that would wouldn't have gone well with Oklahoma City. Not in this, that not year. this PC age either. That's kind of like when the wizard or the uh, like bullets the bullets became the, the wizards. wizards. Yeah, they should have called them. The they dragons. should have stayed. They were talking about calling the dragons. They should have stayed the bullets. Yeah. I know. I but still, eh. the wizards just the wizards it. is not. They could have did better. They, they could have did, you know, Washington Raiders. They they could have come up with anything. No, I wouldn't. Call, they just, I, I mean, wouldn't call them the Raiders, but you no, know. but just I mean anything, you know. I mean playoff baseball, call them the Senators. You know, I, I mean, what's the difference? But uh, yeah, I do. I did not know it was originally the Bombers. Yep. Did not know that. Yep. I do remember when Tennessee first got their team, and they were the Oilers for a season. Yes, the Tennessee. Well, I think it was. Two. Was it two years? I yeah, think it was they, two because they were in Memphis the first year. They were the then, Memphis Oilers, weren't they? No, they were ten. They were still oh. ten. They played in Memphis. Okay. They, I think they played in the Liberty Bowl, and then they played in Nashville the second year. But they played in Vanderbilt Stadium, and then they moved to the what they have now. I think it's it was then Adelphia Coliseum. Now it's Nissan Stadium now. Yeah, but I, I remember that they and were now the that, Oilers. And then they, when they moved, they became the Titans. They were the Oilers at first. Yeah, I'm surprised like a lot of cities, you know, they did that uh, Houston didn't invest in the name. Cleveland did. Cleveland did. I believe the Packers do as well. Not that uh, the Packers are going to go I don't think anywhere. they're ever going to go anywhere. No, but I, I do believe the city owns part of the team or something like that and how they however that goes. But uh, and speaking of the Browns, I will say for football, I don't know why, but watch out for the Browns this year. 
I'm not saying they're going to win it all. I'm not saying they're going to be amazing, but just watch out for the them. The hype is, is going to be too much for them, and a lot of people think they're going to do well. They may not do as well as they think they are. Yeah. I think they, got, they, have, they have a very stacked offense as far as weapons. I don't mean modern America history weapons or anything like that. <laughs> oh, Kevin, I hope you're listening. Uh, uh, Oh, if he my. starts that again, I will solely blame you. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, um, Jesus. But um, Browns are good on offense. De- defenses, you know, they're good, too. I, I don't know. I mean, you still have the Steelers and the Ravens in that division, too. And it looks like our Dolphins have a new quarterback. Josh Rosen, yes. And Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yes. Now, where – what happened to uh, – the former quarterback, isn't that terrible? I'm having a I Tannehill. Have a Tannehill place. went to Tennessee. Tennessee. How do you think he will fare in Tennessee? He's their backup. Ouch. Um, <laughs> now, with the propensity Marcus Mario, Mariota gets hurt, he could see some action That's during possible. the year. So we will see. Hopefully, the Dolphins will have a little bit better year. Yeah. Uh, uh, hope, well, I think they're rebuilding though. And get me, and it's it's been happening for a while. They're one of these teams where you think you you kind of don't want them to lose, but you want them to lose, and then they they win draft. they win seven games just like so, that. So I mean, preseason's coming up. Mired in mediocrity, that's the term. So the preseason's coming up here in a little over a month. Um, training camp will be training camp. Na- yeah, we're going. We're almost in July, so it will be next month. Based on based on the early reports of teams and all that, who do you like? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm saying look out for the Browns. I, like I said, I'm not saying world champs or anything like that, but I think you're going to see a little bit. They poured it on last year. They did a lot better last year than anybody thought. I think they're going to do something this year. Well, you got teams like, I mean, the Chargers have kind of just, you know, they're getting, they're on the upswing. They're one of those teams that are going up. Uh, Patriots are always the Patriots, no matter if they lost Gronkowski and they lost um, Danny, uh, no, not Danny Amendola, uh, the other guy. Uh, what was his name? Uh, well, they lost Chris Hogan, too. But nonetheless, um, Patriots will still be the Patriots because the rest of the division isn't really that good right. to start with. Unfortunately. Um, I mean, the Chiefs, the, Tyreek Hill is going to be suspended for who knows how long. Um uh, the NFC, it's a little early to tell, to be honest with you. I just wanted to get your, uh, your um, outside opinion. You know, but you you do have – it's – I don't know. Injuries are going to play a big part into of course. it. More of attrition, as it always is. But, yeah. So maybe now we'll end the show after yeah. going off the rails I, for I, another I ten minutes. But yeah, I think we've hit all the high points and even some I'll, of the uh, I'll go ahead and uh, yeah, run down the, the uh, socials. Yeah. Uh, Facebook is the 546 Project. Just search for that. You'll find us. Give us a like if you would. Uh, our YouTube channel, just search for the 546 Project again. And you'll find our video food box episodes on there. I'm up to, I don't know, 30 plus. And there's a new one coming. Uh, there actually is a new one coming. Uh, that I recorded, not the one that we're going to record today. But, ah, okay. You um, want to give us a preview? What it is, is about the S'mores Oreos. I have You've not, did S'mores Oreos. Uh, they did, but they, uh, I mean, they haven't brought them back in a couple of years. Oh, okay. So they're not new, but they're back. Okay, I, I see. So okay. I did a review on S'mores Oreos. The last one I posted was, um, uh, that was the, the bacon, the McDonald's burger. Uh, Did that, you have the, bake, the that I, bacon? I don't like that one. Really? It, I, the one with the McBacon sauce or whatever. It's messy. It's really it's, messy. It, it's okay. I really like the uh, chicken. The mozzarella. tomato mozzarella. Yes, really like that. I hope they. I really wish they would keep it. Yeah, I, I'm not as big on that, that. I like McDonald's chicken better than their burgers. Mm. That, that's just me. 
Yeah. To each their own. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a bad sandwich. It's not. Don't get me wrong. But I just I really like that chicken mozzarella thing a lot better. It's delicious. I'm mad. I would be at McDonald's. I know you're listening, of course. <laughs> I just want to admit it. I'm mad that we don't have the slushies in this area. Why does that have to be a, a limited location? You mean ocean? like where I am? Yeah, you've got them. I've, don't you? I've seen them. I haven't have had any, them? but I've seen them. Yeah, well, I mean, trust me, don't just make me walk up there one day all the way to where you are just for a slush. I'd probably need one because I'd be dead. But still, <laughs> none of them around here have. I think Greencastle's the closest one. And mm. my, uh, you know, uh, sight impaired self. The, the, the one that's that I can stare at outside your window does not they, have They them. just, no, they're not, they're not taking any part of that. No. So. It's tragic. So uh, the other social media we have, uh, if you want to email us for maybe our first email ever, uh, the 546 project at gmail.com. I mean, we're not begging or anything, but please. Um. Uh, our podcast website is uh, the 546 project, 30 minutes or less. It's our old name, but it's too much work to change the website's name. So that, that whole thing dot libsyn l-i-b-s-y-n dot com and we also are on a itunes google play music and spotify we've gotten a couple downloads from spotify yeah, which i'm like I, yeah i applied a while ago and no one had downloaded it for a while and then i looked at the stats and yeah a couple people have downloaded it. thank you spotify yeah i, I liked you yeah so if I you're on spotify are we on apple music too like is that a thing well it's, I, itunes oh itunes okay yeah okay cool so all those you can find us and you all of us, us your, you can get us on your even Android kevin and jason fruit devices you can i mean we're everywhere so from uh we'd from, like to thank you for joining us from Dan and me, Nathan, until next time, we'll see you there. Peace out. There.